Welcome back, Seth Bling here. In the week 22 snapshot, Mojang made a couple more changes to villagers. The biggest one is that they will now accept two different items in their trade slots. Uh, they'll purchase two items, they'll still only sell one. So for example, here's uh, a way to create a deal for a sword. A lot of people are complaining that I, I had a villager selling three a sword for three diamonds didn't really make any sense so here's the actual crafting recipe for a diamond sword obviously this is a bit redundant because you could just put down a crafting bench and make it yourself but this kind of shows you that you can create your own trades uh, or your own crafting recipes kind of anyway so I've updated the script for the, the change uh, so here's a chest that we're going to turn into a shop each column is still its own deal or trade in the villagers inventory but now there's two rows for trade uh, things that the villager is going to buy and one row for the things the villager is going to sell. So let's hop in MC Edit and we'll execute the filter. Alright, so this red thing is the existing villager shop. This, this one is the chest that actually has items. You can actually double click on it and see all the stuff in the chest. Uh, I'm just going to click twice to select just the chest and I'll go and run the filter. Create shops. Now there's some new options that I added. Uh, first of all, because there we, we use all three rows in the chest, there isn't room for a piece of wool to determine the villager's color. So there's just a way you can just select what color you want the villagers to be when you run the filter. So I'm just going to run, I'll make it a priest purple. Okay, so there's a couple new options also. I just add unusable trade. And what this will do is it'll add a trade to the end of the list that is not really usable by the player. And what this does is it prevents the villager from ever offering new trades. Because the only way that a villager will get new trades is if the player actually executes the last trade in the villager's list. So this makes it impossible to do that. This one's invincible villagers. I'm just going to check this. I'll get to it a bit later, but it's going to make the villager invincible, which is good for multiplayer. We're on the filter. We notice now it's a red block just like the other one and so now we'll just hop back into Minecraft and check it out. Alright so here's our new purple villager. I'm going to open up the trade screen. So there are some things I want to point out about trading at this point. First of all if you have an item like a book or an enchanted weapon or something uh, the villager is not going to actually look too much at the information for the book when he's making the trade. So this is a special book in the trade list, but if I have the normal book here and I just trade it, I can still get the items. So you can't use books as sort of a unique, uh, some sort of unique key that you can sell to a villager. And the same is even true for different colors of wool. It doesn't look at the damage value for the item. Uh, so that's actually what allows you to trade multiple multiple colors of wool, but it also allows you to trade in damaged weapons to the villagers for, and they they won't care. Uh, then there's I also want to point out that now that we have multiple trade slots, you can actually do some kind of cool stuff. Say you want to require the player to collect both colors of mushrooms and both colors of flowers in order to get this awesome enchanted sword that I just randomly created. <laughs> you can do something like this, where you where you give them one useless item for for the two of the items, and then another useless item or un unobtainable item at least for the other two, and then you combine those two into a deal for the actual item. That's kind of a cool way you can do sort of a victory monument or something. Again, you can't do the the victory monument with like wool, but you can do it with different other items like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing I want to get to is there are some particles flying off this guy. That's the invincibility effect. It's actually resistance 4. If you eat a golden apple, you get resistance. Well, this is resistance 4. It turns out that that provides 100% protection from damage. So no matter, no matter how much you hit this guy, he is just not going to die. You can put him in lava. You can blow up TNT. He won't take any damage at all. So that's pretty cool, and it's, it's actually an effect that you might want to apply to mobs other than villagers. So I actually went ahead and made it a separate script, an invincibility script, and and you can just download that in from the video description alongside the color shops filter. And it's really good for multiplayer because if you want to put a villager in a box, like a bedrock box somewhere, but you don't want players to be able to kill the villagers and take away the, the shops from all the other players, that's pretty good. 
Okay, so, and you, you could of course apply the script to like it, your, your wolves in your single player world. It, I know a lot of people are just don't ever take their wolves out anywhere and just because they, they die so much, so you might want to do this or or whatever, it's up to you. The invincibility effect only lasts for about three years, and that's three years of real lifetime, so <laughs> it'll probably be around for a while, but um, yeah, you can also apply the invincibility to hostile mobs, but they'll just despawn eventually, so it doesn't really do quite as much. So yeah, again, you can download these filters from the video description and use them for yourself. If you want to modify them, you can. Just please give me credit. And thanks for watching.